Okay, thank you for joining us for today's media availability with uh, Buccaneers General Manager Jason Light. I'd like to go ahead and, uh, and go ahead and throw it over to Jason for his uh, initial comments, and then we'll start taking some uh, questions. I want to thank you guys for um, joining us tonight, and I apologize for not getting back to everybody today. It's been obviously a big day for for us and for Tom, and thought it would be easier just to address you guys in this. Um, in this forum. Um, anything I say today about Tom is uh, an understatement in terms of what he's done for not only the Buccaneers, but for the NFL, for the Patriots, his entire career. And obviously a very big decision on his part, but um, we're just extremely um, happy that he chose us and have a lot of gratitude towards him for what he's done for this organization, for this fan base. So with that, I'll open it up. Hello to Rick Stroud. Jason, I'm just wondering, I know when you signed him, you hoped he would obviously win, uh, but also leave something behind. What, what do you think will be, you know, the lasting legacy of his or the impact he'll have on your organization or your team? There's so many to mention, I wouldn't know where to begin. He's, at least in my opinion, and I know the opinion of many, it's not all, but the greatest player in the history of the league. And just his dedication to winning, his dedication to preparation, and his dedication to being a leader and caring for people and everybody that surrounds him is, is unmatched. Um, like I said, this is anything's an understatement. I could go on and on. Yeah. But I think um, over the last course of the last couple of years, we've, we've come from behind uh, in many games and had a penchant for doing that and winning. We've won a lot of games in the last couple of years. And just the belief in the team, the belief in the system, the belief in each other, and belief in you know your teammates. And it was been a true team effort in a lot of these, uh, in a lot of our success that we've had. So I think that's the first thing that comes to mind is instilling that into his teammates. Thanks. Jenna Lane. Hey, Jason, thanks so much for doing this. I know you've got quite a lot going on right now. Um, how much of a challenge is it for you guys now entering free agency when you got to add possibly a, a quarterback onto the wish list? You've already got a number of guys that you're trying to resign. Well, it's, it's something that we knew was going to happen at some point. Um, and, you know, it, it didn't completely shock us um, in the last 24 hours, uh, to be honest with you, that, that this could happen. So we've been preparing. We were in this situation a couple of years ago where Bruce and I both said, you know, we'll have to look behind door number two. And, and we're at that position again. Now we feel like we're very excited about the development of Kyle, um, where he's come from in the last year and what he's done. Just being able to sit behind Tom and Blaine and, 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 and Ryan as well in that room with Clyde and Tom Moore and BA. So we're, we're going to explore all avenues to try to make the best decision that's, um, that we can for the organization. But it, it didn't come as a surprise. We totally respect Tom's decision. And it's, uh, it's an unbelievable feat on his part, not just his career. And we've only had him for less than 10% of his career. But what he's done for us is monumental and will um, transcend many generations here in Tampa. But um, we'll, have to, we'll have to make the decision that's best for us moving forward. And uh, we're prepared for, for doing that. And I know you guys really were trying to maximize the window that you had with him. So you were able to borrow from the future. Is that something that you guys will continue to be able to do, having that roster flexibility, again, of, of borrowing uh, from the future, trying to kind of keep that roster intact and, and possibly add more guys? You know, we feel like we have a really good foundation on our team. I think BA has already said that this isn't a rebuild. This is a reload. I look at it a little bit as a remodel. So it's um, – and agree with BA. Um, we've got seven of our nine pro bowlers under contract next year. We've got a lot of really good young players on this team. We're going to try to re-sign some of our players back 
and we'll continue to uh, explore players and free agency as well. And we have the draft coming up. We're here in Mobile right now working on that. So we, we do not feel at all like we're in a situation where we have to completely um, uh, start from scratch with this roster whatsoever. We have a lot of good players, but a lot of teams are very um, wish they were in our position. Greg Allman. Hey, Jason, obviously having Tom here changed things so much in terms of the expectations and, and the high level it's set for being a playoff team, being a contender. H how important in these next six weeks here before free agency is it to find a quarterback that allows you to continue that as you get other people to weigh their decisions about coming back as, as free agents this spring? Well, I think it's important that we just look at the entire team as well. Now, this this is – we've had – a like I said, in the last couple of years, we've won a lot of games and it's been a team effort. And Tom will be the first to tell you that now, Tom is an unbelievable quarterback, the best, but, and we'll, we'll have to make decisions and find, um, figure out what we think is the best decision moving forward for the Buccaneers, whether that's, um, someone in house, whether that's, we, there's the draft, there's trades, there's free agency. So we'll, we'll, we've already been, we've been working on it right now. Now, today isn't the day that, um, I want to, you know, give out our plan of what we're going to do. It's more kind of celebrating Tom and what, what he's done for us and which has been um, very substantial to say the least. Thanks, Jason. Sarah Walsh. Hey, Jason, we talk so much about, you know, this bar that Tom sets and for you and spy tech and these guys in the front office, you guys have sort of set this insane bar over the last two years, right? So two years ago in this position, um, we're in an off season. And then you guys come out with this announcement that, that Tom Brady's here, right? Like, so, so no matter what, can you just speak about personally? I mean, this is a, this is a tough act to follow up, right? Like there is no Tom Brady that's, that's coming, right? You can't replace a Tom Brady. So for you personally, as you try to, to fill this and you reflect back to where you were two years ago and what you've done. Um, what do you do for an encore in a situation like that? Well, I guess that remains to be seen. Um, I have a lot of faith. I know Bruce does as well. I know our entire coaching staff, my staff, the entire building has a lot of faith in the players that we have on this team. And we'll, we'll continue to add. I think that the, the experience that they've had in the last couple of years has made this team a lot better. Um, there is no replacing, you're not going to find another Tom Brady, but you can find a good player and you can develop good players and everyone will step up and they've learned throughout the last couple of years how to do that. And I think, um, just the experience that they've had the last couple of years playing with Tom Brady is, is just something that, um, is our lessons that, uh, are, <laughs> are invaluable. So we're, we're very excited about the future still. We're very excited about the team that we have, and we'll just continue to march forward. We'll go to Ira Coffin. Hey, Jason, just want to talk to you about uh, where this franchise is at this moment. Um, Jason, 29 and 10, Vince Lombardi trophy. You had a lot of good players in their, in their prime, Jason. So when you add all that up, um, wouldn't it be tough to hand the keys over under center to a to an inexperienced quarterback at this stage of where the franchise is? Well, we'll continue to 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 look for the best available option, um, whether that's someone here or someone out there. But like I said, we've we've this team has has grown together. It's the best locker room I've ever been a part of, and um, I think BA said said the same thing. And I know a lot of our players share that belief. And that bond is very strong and the experiences that we've had that can take you places um, um, that, you know, uh, you know, having a bunch of new players may not be able to do. So we're, whether you're handed over to an inexperienced guy or a veteran, I think the, the leaders that we have on this team, um, Levante being one, um, will definitely help um, and bring that person along, whoever it is. And Jason, what if in your mind is your top priority on the uh, defensive side of the ball, Jason, to improve? Right now, we're, uh, you know, we have a lot of priorities. And just like you do every year, you can be coming off the Super Bowl and you have priorities like we were last year. So we want to, uh, 
obviously get better. We want to get faster. We want to get more athletic and we want to uh, be physical and play on our terms. So um, we have a lot of decisions that we have to make here in the coming weeks. And like I said, today we're, I was hoping that we could just talk mostly about Tom Brady. John Romano. Hey, Jason. Two years ago, you talked about uh, what you and BA were looking for, you behind door number two. The roster was in a position at that point where you wanted the best quarterback you could absolutely find, regardless of how long he was going to play with the team. Where the roster is today, do you go into free agency with the same thought, or are you more open, or are you looking for somebody who, who might be a longer-term solution? Well, we'll have to, we'll have to go down every avenue. Um, you know, it's a little bit different landscape than it was a couple of years ago um, with the, the quarterbacks that were available in free agency. So we'll have to we'll have to go down every avenue. We'll have to turn over every stone. I hate to use cliches like that, but we will. I think our roster is in better position than we were two years ago in terms of the um, young talent we have and the experience that they have at this point, what we've gone through in the last couple of years. So I'm excited about that. Scott Reynolds. Hey, Jason, Tom helped you attract some of the top free agents because players wanted to play with him and for you in the Buccaneers. The first one was Rob Gronkowski, whom you traded for. Do you suspect that, that Gronk won't return uh, now as, as well? No, I don't suspect that. I think that's yet to be seen. Um, I'm giving Rob his, 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 the respect to give him some time to um, – to see how he feels here in the coming weeks after a long, grueling season, especially when you played in the league for 11 years. You need a little time to, uh, to think things through, to see if you want to go through it another year. And from my conversations with Rob, he just needs that. I don't think it's going to be um, independent on whether or not Tom came back or not, from what I, from what I understand. And I know that Rob had an incredible experience here as well. And he was a big factor in us having the success that we did. So... We would welcome Rob back with open arms, but we're giving him a space right now to uh, decide what he wants to do. And are you concerned that, that Brady's departure might make it more difficult for you to return some of your top free agents, especially guys on offense like, say, Chris Godwin or Ryan Jensen? Um, I will say this. I know that our players love playing here. They love playing for this coaching staff. They love this fan base. They love this town. Um, I would say that our players, the core of our players are what attracted Tom Brady to come to Tampa. So I think that will continue. If Tom chose us, I think that will continue to uh, help other players make their decision to come to Tampa as well, because we have a lot of very good players and an unbelievable coaching staff. Kevin O'Donnell. Hi, Jason. Uh, you talked about, you know, in Tom's first year, just the culture change that he brought uh, to one buck. Um, and you're hoping that, it, that that's something that will, you know, last a, a long time here with this organization. In what ways did Tom maybe help you or maybe change your perspective in, uh, in how you approach uh, this organization? You know, well, it's, it started, you know, three years ago with, with Bruce and he really helped set the tone here with the culture. And then adding Tom on after that was really a, a game changer. So the two of them combined. And what I've learned from both of them is that just exceptional leadership on from the head coach and from the quarterback um, or whatever players that you have on your team. Like I've mentioned Levante, uh, um, Devin. I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, Ryan Jensen and Allie Marpet and even some of the young players like Tristan and, and Donovan. Um, the leadership goes a long way and so does the cohesiveness of the locker room. It's, it really, it, it's been said a lot, but it can't be said enough that this team, this locker room is as tight as I've ever seen one. And I think that that was the key to us. One of the major keys, in addition to having Tom Brady and Bruce Arians as our head coach to us winning. So I think that will continue. Um, we're losing a legend in Tom and no one wants to lose a legend, but the lessons that he's uh, provided for these guys with his, just his actions and his leadership, along with our head coach, who we still have are going to, are going to continue to let our team um, uh, continue to build on it. And we're going to, we're going to have continued success because of it. I'm confident in that. 
Was there any concern with Bruce? I mean, obviously, uh, he turned 70 this year. I don't think he wants to be around for a rebuild. You mentioned remodel. So does he see the plan in place that, that he's happy with that? Obviously, he said he wants to stay. There must be something there that he sees and that he has a, a positive outlook for. Bruce sees a lot of really good players on this team. He sees a, a very close relationship between myself and him and the front office and the coaches, which is very hard to find um, in this in the in this day and age of sports, when it's this close, it usually breeds success, and we have that. And it's such a rarity that he doesn't want to he doesn't want to leave on this yet. So um, I can't say enough good things about Bruce and our relationship, but not just our relationship, but the relationship between the the coaches in the front office and everybody in that building. We have time for a few more. We'll go back to Greg Allman. Hey, Jason. As you guys navigate a lot of decisions this spring. Uh, up against it tight with the salary cap. You guys had made moves with Tom's contract this time a year ago uh, to create some cap space, and those set up a bonus that's supposed to be paid this week and also uh, potential repayment if he retired. Is it reasonable to think that those two will kind of be a wash and cancel each other out? Yeah, it's, that's, that's a, really a moot point. We've been talking with Tom's uh, agents. We have a great relationship with Don and and um, Steve Dubin and Don Yee, and we've been talking about that. That's really a moot point. And we knew that if this, um, we were in this scenario, that, that we would uh, be able to work that out. So I, that's, you know, besides, I don't like to talk about contracts publicly, but, but we'll be able to work that out. Jenna Lane. Jason, I know it was really important for Tom to call you guys and to let you guys know of his intentions before putting out an announcement. If you could, are there any things that you can share from that conversation with Tom, um, between you and Tom, and, and what that was kind of like for you? And, and also, um, if I may, does this in any way speed up the timetable for Kyle Trask's development? Well, I like to keep conversations as confidential as possible, but I, I will say that Tom and I have a unbelievable relationship um, built on trust. Um, both of us held true to our, our word from when we started together here. Um, I, I feel this is not about me, but I feel extraordinarily lucky that I was there from Tom's beginning to his end, his first pass, his last pass, his first touchdown, last touchdown. So that's pretty cool. I'll be able to tell my grandchildren about that, hopefully at some point. But um, you know, the, the call that he made when he chose us and then the call that he made to me last night when he made his final decision, they're on different ends of the spectrum, but at the same time, they're both very special and both special moments to uh, talk to an hour or whatever it was with him. Um, I don't necessarily think that we need to speed up the process with, with Kyle because I think we have him on a, on a good track right now. And he's been... Um, He's been well coached and he's had, you know, the un unbelievable resources to uh, lean on where he has, where he, to, to get to where he is right now. But we'll see where that goes. We don't want to rush anybody. Um, but it's, it's been a, I couldn't think of a better experience for a young quarterback to uh, spend his rookie year than with the greatest player of all time. Rick Shroud. Jason, you don't pick first overall, that's for sure. You're, you're where you want to be down at the bottom. But with respect to quarterbacks, have you changed your, your sort of philosophy? I mean, you have a team that's ready to win now. You see the Rams, what they did with Matthew Stafford. Is it harder to develop quarterbacks now or to wait on them? You, you went that path with Jameis Winston and five years went by without much success there. Um, it, I think it all depends upon the team that's around you, uh, that, that's around them. The talent that you have, which I think we have great talent, and the coaching staff, which I feel like we have a, a great coaching staff that got, um, in Kyle's case, from day one. So um, I think it all depends. It's It seems easy to uh, fans to feel like we can just go ahead and offer a trade to, to bring a great quarterback in here, but uh, the teams you're talking to are then going to be looking for a quarterback. So it's it's – no one wants to be in a position where they don't have a quarterback. And we feel very, very fortunate. And I'm, we're not crowning Kyle as the heir apparent yet, but we feel very fortunate that we got him when we did last year, because 
where he stacks up with with quarterbacks in this year's draft, it, you know, it's going to be everybody has going to have their own opinion. But I feel pretty good about where he stacks up with these with these quarterbacks. So I feel like we made a we made a good decision last year. We'll finish with Joey Knight and then Sarah Walsh. Jason, like you said, you've been with Tom since day one. The whole world knew what you were getting when he signed a couple years ago. But did he even not, exceed? Not, not the whole world. <laughs> did he even exceed your expectations? Was it was this two years even better than you thought it would be? That's hard to say. I had the experience with him. I knew what he was going to be like. You never know um, how it's going to. There's so many factors that can go into play that are outside of the realm of the quarterback and the head coach and the GM and the team. It was the it was the most rewarding two years that I could imagine. Um, more rewarding would have been two Super Bowls, but the fact that we won a Super Bowl and then this year um, had the best record in the league along with the Packers, um, just it was just something um, you know that you that you couldn't draw up. It's it's something that will be talked about for generations. Um, it's it's awesome for me to see whenever I'm in different parts of the country to see people with Buccaneer jerseys to see young kids wearing Tom Brady jerseys. I think it's just, uh, it's an unbelievable fairy tale story that uh, we'll be talking about forever. Last question from Sarah Walsh. So on that note, Jason, when you talk about it being an unbelievable fairy tale and, and this is the end of that chapter, can you just take us back to that night? And, and I know you don't wanna share that confidential conversation you had with Tom when he said I'm coming here but when you hung up the phone and you went to bed that night can you just describe what that evening before it broke to the world what it was like for you knowing hey I just got Tom Brady to come here well the room was spinning a little bit um and um because of you know we were so excited but we also celebrated a little bit and um it was just, I, I felt so proud of my staff. I felt so proud of the coaching staff and for the entire organization for what we had put together for him to choose us and the hard work that went into that for many years and the owner, ownership for giving us the green light to pursue this. Um, it just all came together at once. And it was just a, a plan that you always feel very proud when a plan comes together. And this was the ultimate plan that uh, will forever be remembered. All right. That's all we have. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, guys.